At the end of the last episode, I left you on the cliffhanger of stopping for a strong cup of tea and a cheddar cheese sandwich as ever. Well, that was dispatched in fairly short order. Alright, lunch has been had. Let us head onwards to Penkridge. It was quite nice to move away from the surprisingly busy road immediately next to that mooring. Just around the corner, the road becomes much more visible as it runs right alongside the canal. I thought that fisherman was on the lock landing when I approached, but in reality he was miles away. It was just an optical trick of the distance. How fantastic to have your own private mooring arm alongside your home. You can't really appreciate it from here, but the bridge is so close to the steps up to the top of the lock that you have to wriggle through on all fours. If you squint, you can just see me doing so. That looks like loads of space, but honestly it's deceptive. You really do have to crawl up and mind your head. Sadly, this long-established branch of Midland Chandlers has just closed, so no popping in for a few bits as you go past. Another rather leaky set of gates at the top of this one, creating quite a swirling maelstrom. And here I am doing my best Windy Miller impression once again. Pausing to see how much of a rush the water's causing before opening the paddle some more. Notice the highly sophisticated microphone rain shield made out of half a plastic washing up bowl. I've largely stopped pausing on the lock landing as I leave these days, instead letting the boat dangle in place with the concrete stopping the stern from wandering. Though you have to be careful that any pull from the lock overflow doesn't set the bow drifting dangerously into moored boats. This is Tedsley Wharf, home to a hire firm as well as various boatyard services.
Ah, the roaring motorway shrieking through the peace and quiet of the canal. The M6 in this case, taking eager beavers south to Birmingham and north to the north. At long last, I'm now coming into Penkridge and we'll try to find a spot to moor that is handy for the road that takes me up to the supermarket. And just beyond that is a lock with the facilities point just after it, if I get the spot I'm after. The CRT have suggested it would be rather nice if everyone could pick up even just one item of waste on every canal trip, whether by boat or by foot. So I try my best, if I can, using the shrimping net. Here's Penkridge, and plenty of space to stop while I nipped to the shops. Right, shopping done, just a few essentials to keep me going. And now I'll fire up the quattro again, go through the lock, and on the other side there is the facilities point. And after that I will head out of Penkridge. But first, a boat I'm sure I've passed now on several occasions, which sells plants of all sorts, and they were very friendly. There's the lock, and I'll let this run in real time for a bit, so you get the sense of how genteel progress is when manoeuvring. Up top, the facilities building is that brick shed, with waste bins inside the fortress of planks. I pulled in and topped up the water tank. To head out of Penkridge requires traversing one more lock, and I must hold my hand up here to confess to my sin, for which I hang my head in shame and anticipate my punishment. I couldn't see any bollards to tie the boat to while opening the gates, and one gate was already open. Surely, I thought, if I do this gently, I can just nudge that with the fender on the front. You're not supposed to do this, ramming the gates with the boat, so don't tell the CRT. But honestly, I went so gently, I'm sure it was fine just this once. Shush now, it'll be our little secret. And look, the lock made me a cappuccino as a reward. Now I just needed to find a nice place to moor, and here's where I do myself no favours. Penkridge is now just behind me, and so we start the bit of boating that I drive myself mad with, because I am the world's most indecisive moorer. 
I'll see a spot and I'll think, well, I'm not quite sure about that one. I, there's, there's a bit of a tree, possibly slightly overhanging it. Let's, let's look for another one. And I go on a bit further and, oh no, there's another one that's got more of an overhanging tree. I should have had the previous one. And then I carry on a bit further and, oh, well now, I don't know, it's on a bend or something, or it's a little bit too narrow at this point, or I don't like the look of it. And I can go for miles sometimes. And I'm just thinking, all I wanted to do was stop. And of course, it's always an earlier one you've been past you should have stopped at. Needless to say, just a moment ago, I thought, well, what I'll do is I'll get out of Penkridge, go after Bridge 83A, and then you've left town. And I've done that, and now there's no nice armco or any suitable bit of the bank to actually stop at. Whereas there were plenty just before the bridge, and lots of other boats moored there, so it's obviously perfectly fine. I just don't know what to do with myself sometimes. Even if I wanted to strike pins into the ground, that bank is too irregular and there are rocks below the water that prevent coming into the side. Ah, look, it's the feathered peril. And with a bridge approaching, with quite a small gap, if they didn't get out of the way, there was a distinct possibility of me crushing them with the side of the boat as we went through. They nearly didn't, but at the last minute saw sense, somewhat angrily it seemed. Here's where I stopped, opposite Otherton Boat Haven, a marina. Lots of boats for company, and it rained ten minutes after I tied up, so that was good timing. Not in the way of boats coming round that corner, this would be fine for a day or so. Cheerio!